this is not a business. This is a way of life. Yeah. When we're talking about the whole U.S. dairy industry, we're losing about $900 million every year, annually, just from the effects of heat stress. My name is Craig Miller. I'm a third generation dairy farmer in McGregor, Texas. We milk about 60 head and we have a processing center where we bottle milk, cream, and we make cheese. There's really nothing that makes our milk unique. We just try not to mess up what God and nature already made perfect. We don't do the high temp pasteurization, the homogenization. We don't put in chemicals that larger companies put in. What makes a healthy dairy cow? First thing always is nutrition. And then after the nutrition, it's herd management. You know, just the, the stress that a general day is gonna put on a living animal is gonna affect the overall outcome of their health. It's Texas and the joke is that if you don't like the weather, wait a little bit, it'll change. Tuesday it was 22 degrees and I think tomorrow it's gonna be 80 degrees. And that's just the way it is. That's really hard on cattle. How will that affect production? The winter time will produce about 50% more milk than the summertime. If a group of animals here is milking 60 pounds a day in the winter time, in the summertime, that same group of animals you would expect to make about 40 pounds. A lot of areas don't have to deal with that. We do. It is a big concern for companies like ours because we're purchasing 100% of the milk from our farm and other farms. So that means that we have to figure out what to do with this excess milk for only one part of the year. The balancing of, of the milk is probably one of the hardest things we deal with, and that is primarily due to the weather. Welcome to the Southwest Regional Dairy Center. We are the Texas A&M system-wide dairy. We're in big dairy country here. Um, Texas is the fifth largest state for dairy within the U.S. Within this county alone, we have about 48,000 cows just in this county. So if you can see above me, we have what we call heat abatement systems. So we have fans and then this white pipe right here, that's a sprinkler system. When it reaches about 68 degrees, that's when cows start to get hot. We will turn on the fans, and when it gets really, really hot, usually when it starts to get into the middle 70s, upper 70s, we'll turn the sprinklers on. They'll wet the cow through to their skin, then we'll shut those sprinklers off. This is all automated. Those fans will continuously run, and we're gonna employ evaporative cooling to cool the cows. How's that taste? Did you like the today? No? Temperatures are pretty good this time of year. If we don't cool cows, there's a lot of effects. So first off, economic effects. When we're talking about the whole U.S. dairy industry, we're losing about $900 million every year, annually, just from the effects of heat stress. Um, decreased milk production, increased sickness in, in different forms, um, decreased milk quality, decreased reproductive performance, um, one of them being really early em embryonic loss. And then if it gets really, really hot, we have increased mortality. This is not a business. This is a way of life. Yeah. This is a little farm and I've got seven families who depend on this. If I do something stupid, those seven families suffer because of me. Well, you got some of these dairies that are, you know, that have entire towns depend on them. Just look out at West Texas and, and New Mexico and Arizona where all these cattle are, are in one area using up all the resources. It's already not financially feasible for them to be in business where they're at. Large factory farms are hauling in tons and tons of grain to feed their cattle. 
Well, when that's not possible anymore, there's nothing you can do but have smaller dairies that are spread out growing their own feed. The barn is designed to catch the wind and so that it's never not windy in here and the, the fans just speed it up. But then on each of those fans, they have uh, atomizers. And basically it'll drop the, the temperature inside this barn about 10 degrees. Wow. Really? All of that working together. So it's like a giant swamp cooler under here and 10 degrees might not sound like a whole bunch but when it's 110 degrees 100 is awesome <laughs> we're putting together a cheese facility so that the other member dairies you know and myself have a destination for their excess milk the six months of the year there's too much milk in our system so that's about, you know, just making things more stable, making things more viable. That's it. Stay true to the old ways, yeah. Yes, sir.